Sometimes life is messy. Have you ever wished you could refocus your mind, home, relationships, and work life? Join us as we use research-based information to make practical changes and simplify life. This is Life Simplified. Welcome to Life Simplified. Whether you are joining us for the first time or have you been on this journey with us since we launched in January, we are glad you're here with us. This week, we are going to focus on eating the rainbow by eating more fruits and vegetables for picky eaters. This month, we have focused on children going back to school and different tips to help them succeed, um, help you succeed financially. And so now we're going to talk about the nutrition part of it. So ladies, I'm going to go on and jump in. How many fruits and vegetables do you eat each day? Not enough. I can <laughs> we'll just be honest. It's funny because I was talking to my kids about that the other day. And my youngest said, you never eat fruit. And I think that's crazy because I love fruit, like all of them. I don't think there's a fruit that I'm not interested in. Maybe bananas aren't my favorite, but I can still eat them. But I do eat more vegetables now than I have Um so I don't know if maybe my taste buds are just shifting a little bit or maybe I'm just lazy and I need to get like some more easy grab and go fruits. But yeah, my kids eat far more fruits and not as many vegetables, but I think I'm leaning more towards vegetables. And I don't know that that's a bad thing, but it is something to be aware of. Right. I definitely do not eat enough fruits or vegetables each day, but it's something that I have been thinking more about, especially when my child will not eat a fruit, I'm, I'm just thinking, but why won't you eat fruit? Fruit is good for you. But how often does she see me eat fruit and vegetables? And how often am I serving them to her to try? For me, I think it's the same. I do more vegetables than I do fruit. Um, and I think it's just being mindful of it. Because when mm -hmm. I... My son, I make sure he has a vegetable and a fruit every meal, but then I'm over, you know, I'm over here not eating that. So I think yeah. when he gets older, he'll pay mm -hmm. attention to, mm -hmm. well, you're not eating it. I think it's more of just being lazy about it. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not because yeah. I enjoy fruit mm -hmm. and I enjoy vegetables. It's just I don't take the time to do it. And I don't know if I just get too busy or sidetracked and just try to rush through the meals, um, especially like lunch, you know, when we're working or things like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I am. I'm more vegetables, less fruit. And I'm the same way, you know, it comes and goes. I may eat more fruits and I may eat more vegetables. Just really depends. The things that you all mentioned, you know, shows that everybody is different in their life. Um, we really need to be more intentional as far as to eat it, but sometimes we are not, you know, and it, that could cause like different things, you know, maybe transportation of going and getting it, maybe because we're lazy and we don't want to go do it, but we try to make sure our kids have it, you know. I know we've talked about as far as being consistent, you know, uh, with our routines and that. And so that's one thing we need to be mindful of, of being consistent with our fruits and vegetables because they serve such great things for our body that our body needs. Recent studies show that many Kentuckian children aged 1 to 5 do not eat at least one fruit or vegetable every day. You think about that. It's hard to listen or see that, but it's the truth. So the fruits and vegetables serve so much for our body. We need to be more mindful of that. There's a lot of reasons, as we mentioned a while ago, why children and other family members don't eat fruits and vegetables. Transportation, you know, transportation in every county is different. And sometimes it's very difficult to get to the store to get fresh fruits and vegetables. Sometimes cost. Cost is a big thing, especially as everything has gone up the last several years as far as our 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 foods. Sometimes we cannot afford that fresh like they want us to eat. There's different options for that. We can do frozen. We can do can. You know, so there are still good options even if, even if you cannot get as far as the fresh fruits and vegetables. I think one of my main things as far as not purchasing, which... We have fruits and vegetables available, 
But I think my main concern is it's going to go to waste. So you just counteracted me right there by saying get the frozen, get the canned. And that is one thing that I do keep on hand. I have a bag of frozen green beans at all times. Now, whether or not I fix them is another story, but I do have them. (laughs) Yeah, and I think it's important that we note that I don't think the general population understands that frozen and canned vegetables have just as much nutrition. Like they are canned, they are frozen at the peak of their nutritional quality. And so I think we have been taught, oh, you have to have fresh or it doesn't count, but that is not true. So I I just want all of our listeners to be aware of that. I know that's something that not all of us have been educated on or that we're aware of, but don't think that you're giving your family a lesser item. Those have actually been prepared and fixed for you at the peak of their nutritional value. I would note that when you're looking at those canned vegetables, look for that extra sodium Mm -hmm. because they may be just the way that they're preserved may have more of the sodium. And when you're looking at canned fruit, be mindful of canned in their juices or canned in water rather than canned in that heavy syrup because Mm -hmm. they might have that extra sugar. Them are all great, great, you know, far as advice there. You know, also another thing that I want to point out is our children may be picky eaters too. You know, um, there's some fruits and vegetables that you may not like, and there may be some that you love. Tiffany said it a while ago, you know, far as taste buds change, you know, it takes sometimes you don't always like it at first but then you can try it again i always refer to whenever i was a snap it assistant i would go into the preschools and i would do a program called leap and you would always bring in some type of sample food for them to try as well and i took turnips in and my mom cooked turnips whenever i was growing up and i did not like them i did not like the smell i did not want to be around them but i thought I cannot bring a turnip in if I'm not willing to try it as well. So I done it different. I didn't cook it. I took it in raw and it is actually really good raw. If so, if you've never tried a turnip, try it. But our taste buds change throughout the years. And like, you know, sometimes we like things um, and then maybe down the road, years down the road, you may not like it again. So just be open minded and be open minded for your children as well on the different fruits and vegetables. Yeah, I think it that's a good important thing to remember because uh, my husband is picky on vegetables. He doesn't really eat a lot. So then if I do serve our son turnips and things like that, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, this is awful. And I'm like, don't make that face. (laughs) Just give him the food and let him determine if he likes it or not. And sometimes, you know, things like I hate cherries, but then I'm like, you know what? He may like Mm -hmm. them. So just being mindful of, even though you don't like it, you can still offer that to your kids and try try to make a straight face. (laughs) And I think how it's prepared matters too. You know, if I tried it one way and I've determined in my mind, okay, I don't like that produce because I tasted it once, how was it prepared? Was it was it fresh? Was it cooked? How, well, how did I have that? Was it in a casserole? Was it on a pizza? Where was it? And how was it prepared? I may like it if I try it a different way. And so I think encouraging, like, don't just try it once and decide. Try it again and again, but try it fixed different ways because you might find that one of you likes raw broccoli and the other one really wants it to be cooked so i mean that's the difference between my husband and i i can eat broccoli either way he does not want a piece of raw broccoli for anything (laughs) he would be very upset with me if i was like here enjoy this is all you're getting today Mm -hmm. kids eat right month is in august the academy of nutrition and dietetics focus on strategies to help families and kids develop healthy meals habits and activity lifestyles throughout this month building healthy habits together gives children valuable skills to use in the future you know what we teach them now as uh, young adults and children and toddlers this is what they will know the rest of their lives so being mindful of that Trying out one of these suggestions to create wholesome eating habits for your children. Create mealtime routines. I know we've talked about routines throughout our podcast for different different ones. And same thing with mealtime. Making sure that you are creating that that is 
good for your child. And Amanda said it well ago, just because you may not like something doesn't mean your child doesn't like that. So being mindful of creating for as different fruits and vegetables for them to try. Get children involved in planning meals, preparing meals, or even cleaning up. You know, as they're, they've got odor, like I've mentioned many times, my children are odor. And sometimes I feel like I have failed because my middle son doesn't cook as much as like my daughter or my oldest son, which my oldest son has moved out. He's got his own place. So he has to prepare for himself. You know, I feel that I failed because I haven't taught him. But, you know, sometimes children don't have that interest in cooking. And that's okay, too. You know, but we need to help them say, hey, do you want to plan the meal? Because if you're including them, they may be able to eat it, you know, different fruits and vegetables. So ask them. I think also this goes all the way back to even like growing it. Like if you can have a small garden, I think kids really enjoy that. They can see the whole process from start to finish. And actually just yesterday, um, my youngest was really excited because he's had a garden this summer and his watermelons are ready. And so we went out and we picked his first watermelon and we told him we're going to give it a, d- a day in the house. Just kind of let, let it hang out for a second. And we're going to we're going to cut it. And um, if it's ready, then we'll go ahead and we will pick the rest of his watermelons we just want to make sure that they're good to go but he's really excited and he loves watermelon anyway but I do know the excitement that he's had with this garden this year that anything out of there even if it's something he didn't like he wants to taste it he wants to try it because that's his garden so these are my watermelons that's my tomatoes those are my okra you know he feels an ownership and I think that can be a really fun way and a good family bonding experience as well to do that together and I think even if you don't have the availability for a garden, a lot of people do them in pots. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you could do a container gardening if you just have just like a porch or somewhere to sit that. And also thinking about this could be something you could do in the grocery store. Yeah. You know, as you if you take your kids to the grocery store and let them pick out what they think the best watermelon is or teach them how to do that or the best tomato or whatever that may be and that gets them involved and invested in that and then learning some new skills too one thing that we've done is occasionally i will say what vegetable do you want to try this week and sometimes i get the answer of none (laughs) (laughs) but then we ask the question again what vegetable would you like to try and have our youngest pick the vegetable for the week and then she's more apt to try if she's given a choice of what to try most definitely you know as they've got as they get older you know giving them them choices and that freedom to be able to decide how hey, I would like green beans today, you know, or let them sit down when you're doing your menu throughout the week and let them decide, okay, how much do you want to eat? And when, you know, what do you want to eat? Because that will make them feel, oh, you know, I'm, I'm included in this. And also, whenever you're fixing their plates, let them tell you what they want and how much. Because sometimes as parents, we like, you're eating this serving size and if you don't then you're not getting up from the table so children have a smaller portion than adults so always keep that in mind as well and whenever they're you're asking them what they want then let them pick i have a question but this doesn't mean that we're if they don't want what is prepared for them that we're supposed to make them something else right correct Correct. yep no we are not short order cooks (laughs) (laughs) So letting them decide from what is there that I want to eat this, this, and this. And that's really hard for me, Joni, because if I cooked it, I'm I'm like, why won't you eat this? This is what we're having. And I put that time and that effort into it. And that's been a struggle for me to take that step back and say she's in charge of what she eats and how much of it. But no, I'm not going to make another meal. Yeah. You know, that's also, once again, letting them be involved as far as what you're going to prepare, what you're going to cook, you know, and then also just encourage, encourage them to try it and children watch. So if you say you don't want it and you don't like it, then they're going to possibly say the same thing. And Ashley, you know, I know far as you saying as far as being cooking something else, that's absolutely not, you know. We are not a fast food restaurant. I encourage them to try what I have or I've 
including them on the planning process. So hopefully there is something there that they would want to eat. And one other thing that I do try to do is include at least one thing that I do know that she she's likes. Gonna, yeah. So she's got this and I would like for her to eat all the other things, but I've taken that step back to not make it an unpleasant experience because if it's unpleasant and that's what she's going to remember that oh Ashley made me try this and it was disgusting developing and practicing healthy uh, eating habits is a lifetime journey you know what we teach them as children is what they're going to go through out the rest of their lives so remember that remember how you are towards food, fruits and vegetables or food in general because what they see is how they're going to be do you all have any healthy habits that you and your family have during meal time? So for us, I think the main thing is eating together, you know, if, as much as we can. Um, eating together, and I like to ask them to try a bite of it. I'm not going to force them to eat it all if they don't like it. I was a very picky um, child, and so I know, like that can be anxiety producing if I feel like I'm forced to eat all of something that I just absolutely do not like but I do encourage them to try it and I think sometimes we try new things and it is a fail I mean I think we have to as as the the one preparing the food to say okay we're gonna try this and then we're gonna we're gonna take real feedback from the people participating and if it's just not a win then that that recipe gets thrown out we're not going to do that again we're not going to make people like be like oh no that thing's being cooked tonight we're all going to be miserable i'm not interested in that and i think also i want to go back just a second to what ashley asked about you know if you don't eat what i prepare then i'm not cooking you something else and i say absolutely not i'm not preparing another meal but I do have the caveat that they can make something for themselves Mm -hmm. um, and that's not they're going to go grab some junk, but they can make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They can make some toast or some whatever that they can prepare for themselves. Um, So I do think that's important too. Like I want them to try it. I want them to give it a chance, but I'm not going to force because I don't want eating to be a negative experience. I like that, uh, Tiffany, that, you know, you say you're not going to but you put it back on them well you can go fix this for yourself you know give them that option you know that way you know at least they've they've eaten trying new foods you know there's all different types of recipes all all different types of fresh and frozen or can you know just being mindful of making sure that they have the fruits and vegetables and the nutrient nutrients that they need each day because food is their fuel food is our fuel as well i kind of look at it like this your car has to have gas to go and if you put in the wrong gas what's going to happen your car is not going to go anywhere so our body is like a car and we have to put in the right fruits and vegetables protein dairy and grains for our body to be able to function well uh keeps far as us from being sick you know or having some kind of disease so we got to be able to put them fruits and vegetables in place you know for them to be able to get that try new foods can be very scary and uncomfortable children have had strong reactions to new foods refuse to eat cry tantrums and even gagging I'm oh gonna have the to, gagging <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna have to tell on one of my son's best friends um he is gone and he's in the military but i still pick at him he st- stayed at our house when they was in school for all the way up until high school honestly until he left for military and so he is very much a picky eater and one day i was gonna cook um cook supper for him and i said hey do you want you know this blah 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 he's like no he went and hid now granted he is a little kid he wasn't you know a teenager (laughs) and bless his heart he went and hid from me because i was gonna make him try something i wasn't gonna make him i was gonna encourage him to try stuff but he went and hid from me so keep that in mind if your kids have friends over and they don't like something don't force them maybe they won't go hide i need to know what you're gonna have him eat i really i need to know do you know i I think that it was like corn or something it was (laughs) it was a vegetable that wasn't like 
nothing off the wall like turnips or any of that. It was a common vegetable. So that's our big joke around the house now. I love it. (laughs) You know, creating a safe and positive experience uh, for snacks and mealtime can help ease with these strong reactions and sporting your child in a new way. You know, sometimes stuff like that could traumatize your kids as well as they get older and that we need to not traumatize them with that you know we just want to encourage not force or say you're not going to get up from this table until you eat all of it or you try this food because that's going to make them not want to try it in the future or anything else so don't traumatize them as forcing them to try new things I have a fun story that goes right along with trying new foods so I think I'll share last night um a We got together with um, some friends, and it was adults and kids alike, and we were just kind of celebrating going back to school. Um, And so we had a meal, and it was, you know, sort of potluck. Everybody brought a few things, and um, we got to the end of the line, and there was some fruit. And so you used your grapes and your strawberries. And then um, someone had brought cubed up pieces of dragon fruit. Okay, so not super common. I would say we can all agree that that's not one you normally have in your, um, you know, fruit tray that you're going to get. And so some people were like, what is this? Um, and I'm like, oh, it's dragon fruit. And I mean, I recognized it, but I have never actually eaten dragon fruit. I don't, I've seen it at the grocery store. And one of my questions was, how do you even cut it up? Like, I don't, I don't even know the process for it. But it's funny because we sat around and had this whole dialogue about this <laughs> dragon fruit because no one. And, uh, you know, adults and kids alike, other than the one who brought it, had um, had it before. And so everybody's like, you going to try it? You try it. I'm not scared. I'll try it. You know, like, is this whole thing, even as adults? And so it's funny. Like, we have to remember that even as adults, we are hesitant to do new things and to try new foods. And so I did try the dragon fruit. It doesn't have a lot of a flavor to begin with. I mean, it's kind of refreshing, but it's not, there's not a strong flavor flavor one way or the other but I think we have to remember that too I try to be really cognizant that if I'm getting frustrated with my kids for not wanting to try something or not taking a bite of something like I've been there I've done that that was me um and I I, again I just want to keep as positive of an experience as possible while still encouraging them to try things that I know are going to be good for them in the long run I was fixing to ask you if you tried it, so I'm glad I did. that you tried I it. Did. Yeah. I did. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. And a, a few of the a different adults, did, and it was just funny watching each other, like that hesitancy when, <laughs> and watching their face, like, oh, am I gonna like this or not? So I think I think it's fun, and maybe that's a thing. Like, do something like that. Try one of those fruits or vegetables that are kind of um, unique and different, and do it as a family. Because dragon fruit could be something like your whole family tries together for the first time, yeah. and. Maybe Maybe your child will feel less intimidated if you, too, are trying a new item. Yeah. If you're going to sit there and look at something and go, I was talking about gagging, you know, ooh, I don't like that, you know, in front of your child, then they're going to feel the same way. So you have to be that positive influence for them to be able to, to try. So... You know, also another thing when we're looking at our plates, you know, make them colorful. You don't want them to be the same color of every one of them because it's one of them things that if it looks blah, you're not going to be interested in eating it as well. So make it pretty and colorful. There's all different colors of fruits and vegetables that you can make it, you know, make that your focus point for them. Plan a meal and snack together at the same day and time each week. You know, have that routine. You know, let them have a snack whenever they get home from school if they're school-aged children. Or even if they are toddlers, they still need to have that routine of snack time. Also, I know everybody's busy lives are, you know, so hectic you cannot say, okay, we're eating supper every night at 6 o'clock. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. But trying to be as a consistency as you can far as for them. But sometimes, you know, it may be later because of the you're running here, there for them, you know, after school activities. Think about how you can change things up and making them easy. It can also be where you sit, where what you talk about or the food and drinks that are that are offered. 
you know, when my children was in school, most of the time it was just me and them because my husband works out of town. So we always tried to be, that was our time to like, how was school today? What's going on? You know, what do you have planned? We always tried to include that in our talks far as when we sit down to eat together. And we always did sit down and eat together, you know, and we still do. And weekends when my husband's at home, we always sit down, but Sundays are our big family day when all of our kids are there and we all have lunch together. So that's when we all kind of catch up together throughout the week as well. By sitting down together for meals that includes veggies and fruits, you, sh- you show your children how to act in a healthy way. As part of this process, don't forget to wash your hands because we want to make sure that everything is safe and that you're not sharing any of your germs with them. No matter how old your child is, there's a way to get them to help plan, make, or clean up after meals. Ask the kids what they think about planning meals or making a list of things to do. Okay, ladies, do you guys have a chore list for your children for around mealtime? I don't have a list, but we do rotate um, who cleans up afterwards. And if you cook, you do not clean up. That is like the rule that we have, no matter who it is, no matter who's at home and not at home. And sometimes they will help me. They're less inclined to help me cook, but they will clean up because they know that that is, is part of their chore. And then also like, I like to give them options. Like I might know what I'm making that week. But I'll say, okay, which one do you want today? So I've set the menu, but they kind of have a little flexibility on when we have that item that week. We also have the if you cook, you don't clean up rule. And I'm a big fan of that rule. But when our oldest daughter is home, then she helps with dishes. Our youngest daughter either helps with dishes or she wipes down the table and sweeps. She much prefers dishes, but sometimes she's not fast enough to beat her daddy to the dishes. So no matter what kind of routine you have for your children, having a routine is just, it's good. Taking your kids to the store also, you know, that also helps them determine, okay, I want this type of fruit, this type of vegetable, including them as far as what their meals are, just like we have talked about at the beginning of this podcast. Telling them to help clear the table or wash dishes are good ways for them to be involved in the after, in the after part of cooking. We often hear the variety makes uh, life more interesting, but it can be scary to try new foods and taste. We need to give kids and ourselves a lot of chances to try new foods and different things that that we can learn to like them. You know, as we talk about all of these different things with picky eaters and eating fruits and vegetables, you know, school time is also a great time for including them in their lunches at school or taking their lunches to school, you know, still making sure that they have the options of the fruits and vegetables or even the proteins, grains and dairy, because all all five food groups are important, just not fruits and vegetables, because each one of them serves as a nutrients that our body needs, just like I mentioned earlier, our bodies are our cars and our food is our fuel. So we need to make sure that we're eating right to be able to function. Making food fun is a way to encourage children to try new foods, especially fruits and vegetables. When they was really, my children was really little, I used to make, um, I would always take a cookie cutter and cut out like sandwiches of different things for to make it interesting for the kids. And they always love that. Also with, with certain fruits as well. We invite your family to join our Eating Over the Rainbow Challenge to eat at least one fruits and vegetables each day for one week. We hope you will join us in taking action to help children t- try at least one fruit and one vegetable each day so they can explore growing strong, learn, and play. Thanks for listening. This is Life Simplified. Thanks for listening to Life Simplified. We are family and consumer sciences agents with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. Contact us at lifesimplifiedpodcast at gmail.com.